Hello! In the last video, we reviewed some mistakes in Beatles songs. The list is huge, and today we continue with the second part. Nobody is perfect. And in the Beatles recordings, there are details that make them so unique. Whether due to an accident, lack of time, or just for fun, the band left a lot of elements to review. In today's chapter, we'll take a look at more of the mistakes in the Beatles songs. One, two, three, four. All You Need Is Love is one of the band's most emblematic songs, written by John Lennon for Our World, the first live multinational, multi-satellite television production. The Beatles represented their country to the world in a broadcast that had the largest television audience ever. An estimated 400 million people around the world watched the show and the Beatles would perform their new single on the broadcast. All you need is love. The song was recorded live by the Beatles, and while rehearsing for the performance, George Harrison was having a hard time with the guitar solo, according to Jeff Emmerich, something that the other Beatles were a little worried about. They were a little uncertain that George might make mistakes during the broadcast. Already in live, at the moment of entering the solo, George starts well, but in the third bar, he slips up and loses a note and simply stops playing. There's a bit of an awkward gap before the chorus comes back in with the strings. The strange thing is, is that before the song was released as a single, they went back into the studio and did some overdubs to perfect it, but George Harrison's solo was never fixed. Ideally, they would have done playback for the show, but John Lennon wanted to do it live. A Day in the Life is often considered to be the band's most accomplished song. Artistically perfect and completely innovative. More than a song, it is a fundamental piece of popular music and is always at the top of the list of the Beatles' best songs. We consider almost a sacrilege to mention it here, but at the end of the song, there is a detail worth mentioning. By accident or by mistake, between minute 450 and 452, in the final chord you can hear squeak. It is discussed if it was a chair or Ringo's shoe. Jeff Emmerich points for the second one. What we know is that different takes were made to get the best record of the final chord, and the one that seemed to be perfect was this detail. It is very little known and very little perceptible. Preferably listen to it with headphones. In the right channel, you'll be able to hear this sound very slightly. As in the previous chapter, we return to talk about this song due to the amount of details it has. In the last video, we discussed how the opening sound was produced, and in this one, we will talk about the closing sound. For a long time, it was considered to be a mistake what was found in 2 minutes and 14 seconds, where it seems that dogs are barking. They are a little more distinguishable in the mono version. The band's fans spent years debating the origin of the sounds, and even related it to Paul's dog Martha, who did not yet exist in those years. The most certain theory is that it was Paul McCartney making the sounds. Although this song has no major mistakes, it has perhaps many small ones. It is considered one of the band's weakest recordings. For example, at minute 121, we have an irregular sound in the tambourine. We don't know why it's there, or if it fell, or if they just decided to play it randomly. There are also inconsistencies in the guitar that can be appreciated throughout the song in the right channel. Something similar to what happened in What Goes On, but in a more discreet way. We hear as well, Without leaving behind the little beats that are there and are heard inconsistently, pay attention to the right channel. Anyway, this song requires further analysis. The You Can't Unhear This channel has a full video explaining this title. Why is this Beatles song so messy? Abbey Road was the last album recorded by the Beatles, and it has some amazing details that were never corrected due to the band's relationships and the short time to release it. This example is almost impossible to perceive, but we know it's there. At minute 239, there's a guitar part hidden by the strings in George's voice. In the Love album version, it was solved and fixed. As an example, I'll give you an excerpt of Take 37 of Something. There, you can appreciate a little bit the hidden guitar that I'm trying to explain to you. 
In the original album, it's also there, but it will be more difficult to perceive. This song is a clear example of Bob Dylan's influence on Lennon's compositions, besides being one of the first songs where another musician from outside the band plays the flute. Tom Robinson relates the lyrics of this song to Brian Epstein, who was a homosexual. Lennon sings to him that he has to hide his love. In those years, homosexuality was a criminal offense in Britain, and here Lennon made a mistake during the recording by singing two foot small instead of two foot tall. In the end, Lennon decided to drop it, saying that some people would love it that way. Two foot small Bang, bang, that's well silver hammer game Back to Abbey Road, we find a detail in Maxwell's Silver Hammer. At minute 121, Paul almost burst out laughing, because while singing it, Lennon made him laugh. There are different theories about what John did, but the most popular one indicates that Lennon showed him his ass. In that recording, Lennon did not participate. He hated the song completely, and even caused friction between them. However, it seems that in the final take, Lennon had a little fun. And Paul McCartney too. Writing 50 times I must not be... In My Life has a small detail. In the final note of the song, at minute 220, you can hear a vibration in the final chord of the guitar. Personally, it's quite irrelevant. But in this task of finding details, we decided to put it on, even if it was almost unnoticeable. We couldn't leave it behind. As you may have noticed in these two videos, Ringo Starr is the one who makes the least mistakes. But here, we will have to mention one. Ticket to Ride is an innovative track. Ringo's interpretation is amazing. But at minute 102, he goes ahead and changes the rhythm. But in milliseconds, he arranges the tempo, another sample of his impressive capacity to interpret and adjust. Well, that's all for now. Like our video if you liked it, and we invite you to subscribe so you don't miss our content. Comment below if you want a third part. There are still a few details. Thanks for watching. This is Music Box. The motherfuckers. Oh, really? Yeah, the motherfuckers. Fuckers. Followed by Angry Birds, Humberdink. If we didn't see the motherfuckers. Round it with any call. Oh, really? Yeah, the motherfuckers.